Hi there again, tech crowd and not so much tech crowd. Here I am again with the Nexus 4, uh, the LG Nexus 4, um, with Ubuntu Touch loaded on it. Um, in the previous video, I went through a general rundown of kind of what it looks like, what it feels like, very positive feelings I have towards it, very happy with the smoothness of uh, changing from apps to apps, moving around the device, it feels very comfortable, it feels quite natural actually, I got used to it very quickly. Um, <clears throat> and uh, one other thing that I, that I didn't mention on the previous video regarding the general feel and getting around was the, the keyboard. Um, initially, the keyboard, let me just unlock it here so we can have a look at a keyboard. Uh, da -da -da -dum. Let's open messaging. I don't know what's in there. Okay, we have uh, something there. Oh, got it. Okay, so he, that that's what the keyboard looks like. Hope you can see that. Now, initially, the keyboard looks uh, it looks like the keys are a little bit smaller because they've actually got a shape around them. I'll try and move that up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, the keys actually have a shape around them, whereas at least on my uh, Android Marshmallow uh, phone, uh, there is no sort of spaces or areas between the keys. It's just kind of like you just have a big white area and then you've got all the letters and so on between them. Whereas here you have, you know, actual kind of little boxes, uh, white boxes that the letters and whatnot uh, sit inside of. So initially it looks like, oh my, I'm, you know, this looks quite... Uh, uh, dangerous, <laughs> um, you know, and you're, you're not sure if you're gonna really hit the mark. But I, I, I've been very happy with the keyboard. I haven't missed a step with it. Very good. Okay, moving straight on to what you can do with the device, which is what I said this was gonna be about. So, for instance, let's let's think about what is the what is the first things you would want to do with 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 your phone. Well. Yes, you want to make phone calls, right? Okay, great. We got we got the phone. Okay, we can make phone calls. Wow. But that's just like, come on. I mean, what can't do that, right? So, next thing we're going to we're going to want to do is uh we're going to want to do some messaging. And as you saw already, we have messaging there and it's very cool and it works. That's great. And we're going to want to have some contacts. That's working too. I'm not going to wait for it all to load. Um, we've got contacts, we've got a camera, we've got a browser, we've got a clock. Okay, but the, one of the first things people are going to want to do with their mobile phone is they're going to want to communicate. And the communication nowadays, I mean, phone and SMS, okay, that's one thing. Nowadays, it's chat, right? Nowadays, it's chat. Nowadays, it's social media. And for anyone who's... Uh, you know, doing business on their phone or something like that, email, right? I mean, the email, chat, and and social media. So, trying to figure that out. What's going on, right? So, the default app that you have when you load the operating system on the phone is the Gmail app. And that looks great, except that, if we go into it, it's a web app, right? This is This is a web app. So, it's basically... A container for uh, the mobile website of Google and that's not exactly what one wishes for but that's what there is <clears throat> all right next thing you have is okay I want to add my work email right so then you need an actual email client to do that there is one and it's a very nice one it's called deco it's right here and if we go into that one, <clears throat> you can see here, I have, <clears throat> I hope you can see here, I have my uh, personal one, which is my Gmail account, <clears throat> and I've got my work account as well. And that's great. All right. But <clears throat> when we have, um, when we have email uh, on our devices, on our mobile devices, are we expecting to have to go and look at our mobile devices, say, every two minutes, every five minutes, every ten minutes, uh, to check if there's a new email? No. We're expecting our device to go, hey, bling, to make some kind of noise, to vibrate, to 
have a little pop-up and notify us of new email. That doesn't happen. And I'll get to why that is in a second. Okay, the other thing we're going to want is chat. Now, there is something like that, for Google Chat at least. Um, I haven't found an actual uh, chat client where, you know, kind of, like if, you're using, if you're using Linux again, you, you probably have bumped into Pigeon, which is kind of like you, you can add all kinds of uh, chat accounts from various services to one program. Okay, I haven't been able to find something like that here yet, um, but there is something called Hangups. Ha ha ha. Like Hangouts from Google, right? It's called Hangups. And yes, you can add your Google account and you can chat with people. But again, when you're using chat on a mobile device, are you uh, you know, do you feel that you should have to go and look at it every, you know, every five minutes, every ten minutes or so on to see if there's a new message that someone sent you, a new chat message? No. You're going to want the thing to bling, to make some kind of noise, vibrate, etc., to let you know that a new message has come. Does that happen here? No. Right? So, we've got chat, we've got email. Um, then, what about social media. There is a Facebook app, but what is it? It's a Facebook, it's, it's a, sorry, it's a, it's a web app. So basically it is going to show you um, your uh, Facebook account, um, the, but, but effectively, again, it's a container for the mobile Facebook website. Okay? So, why is this happening? Why is it that we have an email app we have a chat app, but we're not getting notifications. Why is that? Okay. It's actually quite simple. When we have, for example, Thunderbird on the desktop, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, okay? We have Thunderbird on the PC. What's going on is that Thunderbird is constantly checking for new messages from Google, all right? And on a desktop or a laptop, that's fine because you've got so much more power uh, you know, if you're plugged in, well, then power's not an issue. And if you're on battery, well, you know, your battery is quite large um, compared to a phone's battery. Um, so basically, with Thunderbird <clears throat> in Ubuntu, for instance, um, or, or a Linux distribution, Thunderbird is polling the Google servers, for instance, saying, do you have something for me? How about now? How about now? Oh, you do. Okay, bling, and then it gets it, and then it notifies you. And... If you're on a, an Android phone, how does it do it? Well, on an Android phone, Google servers are pushing notifications. So Google servers get the new email or get the new chat, and then they push the notification onto the Google platform. Okay? So <clears throat> on an on a, on a Android phone, there is no polling going on from, for example, the Gmail app or the Hangouts app. There's no polling of the Google servers, because if that were happening, the battery life would suck on your phone. So, what's happening here is that there is no polling going on, again, because on a mobile device, if, if you know, chat applications, Facebook applications, um, Facebook messaging, uh, you know, if they were all polling, your battery life would suck. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Google, Facebook, etc., they are not pushing notifications out to the Ubuntu platform. And so this is why, uh, <laughs> this is why effectively, um, these apps are not really live. So for instance, if you're in Deco, uh, you know, right now, as I have it on screen, the email, if, if I get new email, it's gonna check periodically um, for new email. But as soon as I go somewhere else, even though if I go to Launcher here, I can see that it's still open, or at least it looks like it's still open. It's got the little, tiny little arrow on the side there. It looks like it's still open, but effectively it's on standby. Okay, this is something else now. The Ubuntu operating system is, uh, is very secure to the point that pretty much apps that are not developed by Canonical they work in a confined or a restricted space. 
And what that means is that they do not have the ability to run in the background. And if they cannot run in the background, then as if they're not on screen, effectively they're not running. They basically go into a, a kind of pause mode or a standby mode when they're not on screen. Um, so that basically in order to see if you have new email, so even if in this case, even if Google were, uh, even if Google were pushing um, notifications to the, to the Ubuntu platform, basically the, the, the app wouldn't know it because the app is effectively on standby. And it is only when you open it again and um, view it on screen that it becomes on. Okay, so there's two issues. The one issue is it's not effectively running if it's not actually being viewed on screen. And the second issue is the services, Facebook, Google, etc., they're not pushing notifications of new status updates, new chats, new emails out to the Ubuntu platform yet. All right? Um, actually, you can see here, <laughs> I, um, I'm getting some email here, and that is because uh, I started a request, a feature request to Google um, for this very thing. Push notifications for Gmail and Hangouts uh, to the Ubuntu Touch uh, platform. So, <clears throat> this is a big problem, guys. This is a big problem because effectively... The device is pretty useless. No one goes and looks at their phone, you know, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, to see if there's a new email or a new chat or a new a status update or something like that. So this is effectively making the device very, very, very... Uh, you, you, you can't really use it. You can't really use it on a day-to-day on -day basis unless you're willing to, um, you know, to manually be checking your phone for, for new... Uh, for new content, for new, uh, for new, sorry, emails and, and all that sort of thing. Um, so that is a real handicap. The other handicap that exists with Ubuntu Phone is, of course, the low selection in apps. As as in the in the last uh, in the last um, uh, video that I made, we went briefly into the App Store. There, there's about uh, I think between seven and eight hundred actual apps. And then you've got about a thousand something uh, web apps, and then you've got several hundred scopes or something like that. Um, and really, uh, the amount of the amount of actual functional and useful stuff in there, as far as I have seen, is very very low. And I asked the community, why is that? Why is it that you know the selection of apps is is kind of poor, and the ones that are there, they they really don't, you know, function that well and all that. Um, and I said, you know, is it a problem of the development process is hard or is there just not enough developers? And the response was, look, the development process is actually very easy. It's extremely simple, they said, but we just do not have the number of developers that we need. So the number of people working on it, working on developing apps is sorely lacking. So... The thing with, um, for example, Deco, is apparently there's some kind of uh, w with the with the whole thing of it not really being live. There's uh, something going on, some development going on that will hopefully very soon be able to uh, let the app in a way or something behind the app uh, pull the the Google servers for a new email. And and I think it's also not Google. It's it's for any for any email account that you that you add. So so that is hopeful, but again, we need Google and Facebook um, and, and other services, wherever they may be, we need them to be pushing notifications out to the Google platform. We really need that. So um, that was that that's really the main the main thing with the phone. One other thing that I that I found a little bit sad is that you can't change the background of this whole Basically, this is your home area. I mean, you know, with Android, you have this kind of screen and you can, you know, move stuff around. But here, actually, you can't do that. Um, you can change, like I said before, you can change the order of the scopes and stuff. But you can't even change the background of the scopes of this sort of home area. 
and I really think that needs to happen. That really needs to be made possible. All right, I'm gonna finish there and hope that gave you, uh, um, didn't discourage you maybe too much, but there is still a lot of work to be done and hopefully we can get people to um, go to, for example, uh, that um, uh, if you wanna support, you know, uh, Google, uh, let's see if we can open this, confirm. There's the browser. It's, it's pretty snappy, you know, but of course, when you're trying to open an app, because the app effectively even if it's in the launcher, sometimes it can take a while to come back because it's in this kind of standby or even a kind of an off mode. Okay, I don't know why <laughs> why it went there. Oh yeah, this is it. So push notifications for Gmail and Hangouts to Ubuntu Touch, please. So if you guys want to support it, go there, add your add your comment, and say yes, we want this. Um, who knows? Google might might even give a damn. All right, well that's it. For now, if you want me to do another video on anything in particular, let me know. Uh, give me a shout out. Bye.